Hello, today we are meeting William Mider and we'll be talking about the soul and other esoteric stuff. And uh, William soon will start coming to Poland. So that's the, the very important information. Hello, William. Hello, nice to see you, Alex. Uh, you are from the United States, so uh, you are not known much in Poland. So please tell us a little bit about yourself, like for the intro. Yes, well, um, first, thank you for inviting me to, to, to attend this interview. Um, I, I'm in, uh, I live in Portland, Oregon, uh, and I'm a teacher of the esoteric philosophy. And I teach uh, this, this, it's a spiritual philosophy that I teach in many countries around the world. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to coming to Portland for the, uh, sorry, for, to Poland for the first time. Um, and the esoteric philosophy is a philosophy of life that has connections to all world religions, but in itself, it is not a religion. It's a set of profound ideas that uh, people are encouraged to think about and see if the world and their lives make more sense when looked through the lens of these ideas. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very, it's a, and a lot of it has to do with understanding the, the nature of human consciousness itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, very important questions for all of us. What is soul? What is the soul? <laughs> Okay. What is the soul? Well, you know, it's a question that world religions have, have uh, asked all along. Um, but from the esoteric perspective, there's a couple ways to look at it. In the broadest, most general sense, soul is just a statement of consciousness, just the con very fact that you have consciousness and you're experiencing your, your mind and your emotions. In a certain sense, that is soul. But then in a more refined sense, soul could be understood as the sum total of the best of you. It represents the sum total of the wisdom that you have acquired over countless incarnations, and it includes the quality of Christ-like love. So it is, it is both a wise part of you as well as a higher kind of love part of you. Um, that's the simplest way to answer that. Mm -hmm. But the soul is a separate entity or, I don't know, some idea only? Yeah, no, it is. The soul is the, soul is, um, the higher part of consciousness. And, it's, it, it, and we want to more and more identify with it. And then the soul is tr wanting to work through the lower self which is really what we would call personality. And so the whole story of, of, of the path has to do with first recognizing your own duality, to recognize you have a higher prompting and a day-to-day -day consciousness. And to know that that higher prompting is coming from the higher part of you, the soul, and it wants to work through the lower part of you in order to contribute to the service of the betterment of something beyond yourself because every human soul wants to serve, but it has to work through an outer garment called a personality to effectively do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you used to talk about seven uh, types of soul. So uh, please tell us uh, where do you have these, these ideas from and okay. how, how do you explain that? Yeah, well, the, uh, the esoteric philosophy is also called the ageless wisdom. And much of it goes back into the, the dawn of time. Um, there are threads of this philosophy found in ancient Hinduism, in mystical Christianity, in the ancient Greeks, in Egyptian mythology even. Um, and you will find that in most of those ancient theologies, the number seven was very important. Um, and in this philosophy, it's understood that in the ultimate sense, there's only one thing, one living principle. Some people call that God, other people call it Brahma, other people call it universal intelligence. But that one life manifests in and as creation. It's the one becoming the many. 
So it's not God and creation, it's God as creation. That's the key concept here. But it is believed that when that one becomes the many, it first divides itself into seven qualities of itself. And these are called the seven rays. And um, it's, it's by, by analogy, it's like if you take white light and project it through a prism, mm -hmm. it will divide itself into seven colors of the visible spectrum. By analogy, that is how a creation is viewed, that the white light of God manifests through seven qualities of itself. And why that's important is that every human soul is said to be on one of those rays. And to know your soul ray is to know the very purpose of your existence, not just in this life, but for many, 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 many incarnations. So uh, how can we recognize this ray? <laughs> Well, these, 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 it, it, they, you recognize it through different types of consciousness. Think of a ray as being a lens through which life looks out at the world. It's a, it's in, in philosophy, it's called an organizing principle. It, a, a ray organizes the way we perceive something, the way we look at the world, what our interests are, how we interact and react, and that each lens will tend to want to serve humanity in a whole different way. So for instance, um, there is one, one type, we call it the second ray soul, that's called the ray of love and wisdom. And people in that, who have that type of soul want to serve humanity through education and many of the helping professions and also the healing arts. But for instance, a fifth ray soul, that type of consciousness wants to help humanity through scientific inquiry and to support the betterment of humanity through science and innovation. Um, and there's another one, a third ray soul is a soul that wants to help humanity through supporting new and innovative economic structures that support the right distribution of resources so that humanity can actually come together and wisely use resources together. These are just three of uh, uh, three examples that I'm trying to share with you. Okay, so what about the souls who make a lot of mistakes and spend many years in prison, for example? Okay, well, first, first off, the soul never makes a mistake, but the personality makes a lot of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that there's, there's two parts of us. The lower self, it's the part that we're most comfortable with and most familiar with. But connected, it's also connected with the mind. So uh, the, high, the lower personality. mind, yeah, okay. The lower mind. The personality has three parts to it. There's a analytical, mental part to it. There's an emotional part to it, and the physical part to it. And that part is what people call ego. And and the soul has to work through that, but that lower ego has a mind of its own, and it it is. Um, it can distort what the soul wants to have happen in the world. And so um, in many ways, it's not the soul that is the problem, it's the outer instrument that it's trying to express through. Mm -hmm. And still the focus of the world, maybe. Uh, well, before you, it, it, there's a big difference between uh, the person that is living the life is, of the personality but has not yet woke up to the soul yeah. versus the person that is living the personality but has awoken to the soul. So my whole work, my, this philosophy is trying to help people who have had an awakening to their own higher consciousness, their own soul nature. Um, but for the person that, for the, for the masses out there, there's, there's not an awakening yet. There's just ego. And all of the selfish tendencies that arise from ego. Mm -hmm. Awakening and enlightenment, is it the same for you? No, a huge difference. Awakening is just the beginning of the conscious path. Enlightenment is a whole different thing. That happens much, much later, many incarnations later. And that happens when you finally, where two things have happened, where the soul has become completely masterful of the lower self so that the lower self no longer has any independent tendencies. Mm -hmm. And number two, you've transformed all personal karma that you've created over many incarnations. 
So there's no karma left at all, and the, the lower self is completely purified and completely servant to the soul. And that's enlightenment. Uh -huh. So it means that we live towards perfection. That's right. We're working toward it. We're working toward perfection. That's right. But, uh, but the soul is perfect already. Yeah? Not well, yes and no. And by the way, yes and no is the best answer to any question. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the answer to my, that, let me tell you why it's both a yes and a no. Uh -huh. Your soul, your higher consciousness, has what is called a fixed design. It has innate gifts and wisdom. In that sense, it's perfect, but it's only perfect in its potential. It's not perfect in its capacity to express itself through the personality without distortion. Um, and so the soul is perfect, but it's imperfect in its ability to find expression in the outer world. And that's what the, the path is really about. The path is really about the gradual process of the, the soul becoming more and more effective at expressing itself through the personality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, during your workshops, do you have any exercises or, or what do you do? Because I understand it's not just talking. It must be something which the participants uh, do. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, both, there's both an academic and an experiential element to what I do. Most of, the, most of the experiential part of it has to do with meditative techniques. Meditation is a big part of this philosophy, Alex. Um, but it's also important to build the understanding as well, and that's what the academic part of it is, you see? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and the workshop I'll be doing in, in Warsaw is called The Soul and Its Creative Destiny, and that's, not all, that's about better understanding the soul in us, but also realize that the destiny of the soul is to be a creative agent. In support of humanity's upliftment, that's the destiny of every human soul. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what about people who get stuck in their spiritual path? When you say stuck in their path, do you mean they're they're not open to new, or do you mean they just feel like they've lost it? They they had it and they've lost it. What do you I mean, mean, I mean rather that uh, their expectations are much different than uh, what really happens during the years of seeking spiritual seeking well i think that that's the, the answer to that is that anytime you're trying to understand the path and better relate to it it's important to first be able to see your own duality to recognize the difference between your higher and lower nature. A lot of times what happens when people fall back, when they, when they feel like they, they've lost their connection, um, it's be, what they've lost is their sense of their own soul. And, and it's all about reconnecting to it. And there are three things that help reconnect you to the soul and its desire to serve. One is meditation. Another is heartfelt service to humanity and a commitment, a commitment within yourself to say, I want to make an uplifting contribution to something. And the third is to study. Those are called the three pillars of the esoteric philosophy, service, uh, study, and meditation. And those all help you get back on track and become unstuck. Isn't that uh, this way that the life is the spiritual path by itself. Whatever we do in life mirrors what we have inside, what we are. Uh, that's another yes and no answer. Uh, a lot of times people talk about the mirror, but they don't realize that there's a double mirror. Oh. In other, yes. In other words, there's truth to the idea that our consciousness is reflected in what, what happens to us in the outer world. There's some truth to that, but that has to do with the lower self. Um, in, when we look at the mirror from the higher self perspective, the mirror is not the outer world. The mirror is the personality itself. 
So in other words, the lower self, the mirror is the outer world. To the higher self, the mirror is the personality. So there's two mirrors, and you have to, we have to distinguish between the two of them. In other words, I want my personality to be more and more a mirror for the love and the wisdom of the soul. Uh, whereas the personality on its own, the outside world tends to mirror it. I mean, you think about it, look at, let's use an example. I mean, if you look at, um, let's say, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. well, uh, Jesus Christ had a lot of negative things come to him. Mm -hmm. Well, does that mean that that's just a mirror of his consciousness? Or maybe there's something else here. Maybe there's something bigger than that, you see. So I often think that the mirror idea in the New Age community is a little bit simplistic. It's a little bit more elaborate than that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you about the New Age. You mentioned that uh, it, uh, this, this word uh, popped up in the 60s. Uh, how would you differentiate between the real spiritual paths and the false ones? Uh, have you um, thought about that? Well, I, can, I, I would answer it this way, that to me it's not a question of what is a real spiritual path and what is a false spiritual path. To me it's a question of what is the measure of truth within a spiritual path and distortion within a spiritual path. Okay. And every, every spiritual path will have both truth and measures of distortion. So it's a question of what is the measure, not black and white thinking, this is right and this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Everything is a mixture of darkness and light in different proportions. Mm -hmm. Perfect answer. Thanks. Uh, the soul of Earth, Gaia, uh, nature, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What about this? Oh, it's a big, big, important thing. You know, um, Alex, in the esoteric philosophy, the Earth is considered a god. It's, a, it's an entity. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in, in you call it Gaia, and that's very common, and that's lovely. Um, but in esotericism, it has another name. It's called the planetary logos, the entity that ensouls the whole earth, and that every kingdom of nature, the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the human kingdom, the animal kingdom, every kingdom of nature is just a layer of its consciousness evolving over time. And so that you and I, and in fact, the whole human kingdom, in its totality, the whole human kingdom is said to be the throat chakra to the planetary logos, Gaia. Mm -hmm. and think about that for a minute. The sum total of all human thought, all human consciousness, is this vibration to that entity. So where is the, um, the heart? The heart The heart is even deeper. The heart represents the hierarchy of masters headed by the Christ. Okay. Um, the heart chakra is called the hierarchy of masters, yeah. So humanity is the throat chakra, but the hierarchy is the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. So, so how uh, do we merge this uh, humanity soul with the humanity karma? Well, it's there's two things that that's right. There's there's global karma and there's individual karma. I think the thing to keep in mind is that in this philosophy, there's a principle called the hylozoism principle. I, I don't know, are you familiar with the term hylozoism? Have no, you ever heard no, of it? No. Okay. Well, let me explain it. It's a, it's a, I think it was a principle that was first introduced by Pythagoras, I believe. But it's, a, it's an idea that every unit of life is a cell within a larger unit of life. So, for example, let me use an example. Yeah. A cell in my hand. In the esoteric philosophy, that cell is an entity. It's a unit of consciousness. It is very minute, very small, but a unit of consciousness. And yet, it's still a cell within a larger entity that is me. And you and I are cells within a larger entity, and that entity is called humanity. And... Um, and yet humanity as a oneness is just a throat ch chakra 
to the planetary logos, as I said earlier. And the planetary logos is like a god to us, but it goes further because there's something called the solar logos in ancient esotericism. The solar logos is the entity that ensouls the entire solar system. And in that context, the earth is a chakra within it. And, and it goes on further, even the whole Milky Way galaxy, which is 150 billion stars, it's a spiral galaxy, yeah. that's called the galactic logos. So you see how big it is. So, so everything is, is living within a larger entity. And therefore, everything has, we are related to not only our own personal karma, but we, have, we participate in the karma of a larger entity. So when I said to you earlier that esoteric philosophy states that when you become enlightened, you're free from all your all karma, what I mean is you're free from all karma that was personally generated by you over thousands of lifetimes, but you're not free from the karma of the planet at all, you yeah. see. So it's a relative, a relative answer. Mm -hmm. And also karma of the group, of the city, country, this kind of stuff. Oh, there's, there's family karma, there's national karma, there's racial karma. There's also familial karma, karma of family. There's also latent karma. There's karma in each of us that isn't even scheduled to be dealt with until another incarnation. That's called latent karma. Mm -hmm. Some things we receive from our parents, grandparents, which is like genetic and some from previous lives, which can be from different direction. That's right. So which is stronger? Which one is stronger? Uh, which is stronger? Well, um, I think that also is a, uh, a question that varies according. I would say it this way. The, um, when you talk about genetic family karma, yeah. So you're, caught, you're talking about karma created by just relationships and family history. Mm -hmm. That's strong. Um, but the further you are on the path, the more the higher kind of karma is, is playing through you and the lower karma is less influential, which is why two people could be born in the same family. One's a, 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 new, a young soul and one's an older soul. And they're, so they're conditioned by the same family, and yet the younger soul may be more um, affected by the family situation than the older soul who can maintain a kind of detachment from it. Mm -hmm. uh, from your experience, uh, how do you perceive the progress uh, on the spiritual path? Is it... Uh, Gradual or quantum leaps? Um, there are times when it's gradual and there are quantum leaps too. Um, there's a whole subject in this philosophy called initiation. Mm -hmm. And initiation is a big subject and it has to do with recognizing the major milestones, the major stepping stones that lead to full enlightenment. Um, and so between initiations, it's more gradual, but at initiation, it's more uh, quantum, as you say. Quantum. More steep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now uh, the changes on Earth or even in the galaxy after 2012, what really happens? Well, the, the, the Earth is a living entity. And it too is evolving. It's an imperfect being, just like you and I are imperfect beings. And so many of the earth changes, there are actually changes happening within the consciousness of the planet itself. And then some of the changes of the earth are caused by us. So, so for instance, um, tectonic forces, great, great uh, volcanism, um, earthquakes, tidal to all of that, much of that has to do with things going on within the consciousness of the whole planet, and it reflects itself through its physical body as tectonic forces, you see. Yeah. Um, and yet, 
there's no question that we as a species are also damaging the earth and the environment. And that's not caused by Mother Earth, that's caused by one of her, her kingdoms of nature, us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's two directions again, two, two levels, you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> I think uh, we, by this uh, interview, we, we introduced you to the Polish audience a little bit. Of uh -huh. course, your knowledge is very broad and, and very huge. And uh, there are a few videos uh, translated into Polish. Uh, so, uh, so let me just uh, say it this way. What would you, ca what, what do you usually cover uh, during your work, more advanced work workshops? Because uh, you, you said you, you meditate uh, during the basic workshops, but more advanced? Are the people already enlightened or what? What happens? Uh, do you have any therapies? Yeah. A, the people are, I'm a teacher. I'm right. not a guru. I'm not a guru. I'm not a, I'm not a priest. I'm teaching a philosophy. But the word guru means teacher anyway. Yes. <laughs> right. The difference, the difference is that in the Piscean age, which we're leaving, yeah. guru was also not just teacher, but there was an expectancy of devotion too. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in devotion. Forget it. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Uh, that's the last thing I want. In fact, when people pro project devotion, I push it away because it's, it's, it's the, that's the way of the past. Everybody, you know, it is said that uh, the greatest master you could ever follow is often the one least followed, and that's your own soul. That's your, your own higher consciousness. So my work is to try to help people more deeply recognize and understand their soul and, and to trust that by following that, they will follow uh, the correct direction in life and indeed make progress in their spiritual evolution, but serve humanity, because that's what's most important, to serve humanity, uh, particularly at this incredible crisis period of transition between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius, and also between a sixth ray age and a seventh ray age. And so we need the best of everyone today, more than ever before, more than ever before. And okay. so um, all of my workshops ultimately have to do with something around those themes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe the, the last question, which just now came to me, why do people have problems? What is it for? Is it uh, school? The life is a school, or um, for what? For a cleaning karma? How would you explain that? Well, I can I can answer it in two ways, and both are true. On one level, it is karma. In other words, um, your your soul deep inside you, your higher consciousness, yeah. is contained within something called the causal body. Mm -hmm. in ancient esoteric philosophy, the causal body. And it's called the causal body because it is your body of causes. It causes the circumstances of your incarnation. It causes your life to navigate where lessons must be learned. So many things that happen to us that are difficult uh, are really set up by the soul to learn a lesson. But not all of it. Not all of it, because you still have, we still have part of the personality that seems to be independently operating. And it can make mistakes and get into trouble on its own without any influence by the soul. Mm -hmm. So again, there's two, two truths to that answer, two ways of looking at it. Let's see. Okay, super. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, maybe some uh, conclusion. What would you advise people uh, on their spiritual path? Well, uh, the, the advice that I can give to people in a general way is this, that each of you, the whole path is a path to discover your own divinity. Yes. In, in many ways, you are the divinity you seek. And to, to the more you sense that deeper part of you, the more you start to sense the oneness of humanity. 
And when you start to sense the oneness of humanity, you start to get more and more conviction that you have a responsibility to bring the very best of you forward in service to that oneness. And so my, 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 my comment here is just to encourage people to realize that they each have gifts to give and the world needs their wisdom, their love now, more than ever in history, they, it's needed now. So if that's one, that's the advice that I can give you um, that I think is applicable to everyone, but particularly people who have awoken to their own higher soul, their own higher nature. Uh, and you're, so I invite them all to realize you're part of an inner group to support and uplift humanity. Super. Thank you, William, for the interview. And I invite you to Poland. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there in just a short time. So, Super. Thank you. Mm -hmm.